All right. Welcome to Rock Vegas, everybody. This is Glenn Rockney. Um, I have a special guest today. It's his first time on the pod. Um, I have Matt Holder with me. Matt Holder from Expanding the Box Score. What, what else you got going on too, man? Like you got so much stuff going on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think I did a while for a while. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty much just doing the Expand the Box Score stuff, man. I appreciate you having me on. Uh, but yeah, we're just doing doing the uh, the draft stuff nowadays with the uh, XTV putting together the guide and whatnot. So yes, and and I, I gotta say, um, one of the reasons I really wanted to have you on is because i really enjoy those videos those little short clips like i think that's yes, i think it's really cool because uh for people not talking about me of course uh who <laughs> don't you know know a damn thing uh you, <laughs> about a certain guy and yeah. instead of pretending you know about a fourth round pick in the draft or something when when your team grabs them oh i always loved that guy you could at least have the spark notes kind of like spark notes is yeah. what i would think is, is like what, what you're doing on these guys and for anyone who doesn't know expanding the box score um if you follow their twitter account i i don't have it in front of me what their what their handle is but um i'll put XTV it in the TV box score there you go XTV box score um matt just does quick videos twitter doesn't let you go longer than you know 220 basically on the upload so um and you did it for pretty much everybody right <laughs> like yeah i mean i've been doing it uh probably like we probably release one every weekday for probably about the month, last month and a half i think i'm coming up on like 50 videos right now so um yeah winding up um you know i got a few guys to get through till uh till next thursday or two thursdays from now um hey. but yeah gonna be doing them up up until round one so there yeah, you go appreciate you man there, appreciate there you the go. Shout out for that. no no worries um i have one thing about those videos before we move on can you tell have you gone like made that video and then you go on twitter and see someone basically copy what you just said and like repackage it as themselves you know, it's funny, like uh, I kind of posted it the other day, um, Dan Orlovsky actually used one of my videos for That's Justice so Fields. Yeah, like he used the same clip I did. And I mean, I'm not trying to say like Orlovsky's uh, watching my videos and stealing what, what I'm saying. I mean, obviously that guy, that guy knows more about football than I've forgotten or what, or the other way around. He's forgotten more than I know. Uh, okay, uh, sure. Yeah, your your, your word, your words, not mine. But <laughs> yeah, exactly. uh, the uh, anyway, the, yeah. the uh, funny thing is I'm, I'm glad you didn't notice that I steal your ideas is what kind of what I was getting <laughs> yeah, at there. Yeah. yeah, I'm glad you didn't notice that. I'm glad I'm glad the big dogs are doing it, though, is all I'm saying. <laughs> no so interesting, interesting. Okay, so um, I, before did, we get started, though, I actually got a question for you, though. What's that? Your Twitter picture. That's yes. not you, right? I, it, that's the worst part is people ask if it's me i'm like well shit do i look like like him like okay, fuck, yeah no no um i started that account in 2012 so i was like 22 just a little asshole on the internet like <laughs> um and i was trying to troll like i just wanted to troll like gotcha. I, I i think the original bio for that was um like i'm a freelance sports writer like i you know little gotcha. league champion like just one of those like sports hardo guys and originally what i did one of the first trolls i did was at warren sap because he had got busted little incident at a hotel room um okay. and i made a joke at him and i said hey man like you tackled those two uh women better than you could anything with the raiders <laughs> you know what i mean and and then he actually dm'd me and was like ha ah, no one's listening da, da, da. but i was like i, I kind of grew out of that phase but then when i wanted to start the podcast i'm like i'm just gonna rock with that picture because i originally wasn't gonna do video so i wanted people to think like what the hell is it who oh, come on like i can't be that guy so nonetheless because <laughs> yeah, that guy looks like he's about in his, in his like third midlife yeah, crisis I, if, I, it's gonna be very funny if, if our <laughs> paths ever cross it will be very funny That'd be great. but uh the uh or people i don't know if people are just gonna be like what the hell dude but uh yeah 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 i'm glad you asked because I, I think i've only explained that like a long time ago and i don't <laughs> think anybody was listening so but uh i just like confusing people but yeah. the uh the raiders cut mohurst and arden key matt did you, did you hear about this? <laughs> uh, I might have. I might have sent a couple angry tweets about yes. it. Probably. But I'm a fake fan, so it doesn't fake matter. Fake fan. I know. Isn't it the worst when they cut a guy, right? Like, and I, yeah. I kind of feared that Hurst was – I, I honestly feared, feared he, they were going to cut him last year. I was kind of – he just never seemed to be, like, what we all think he was going to be. Not not by his own ability. I just don't think the team liked him that much. Yeah, and, and it's and it's funny to me because it's like – I feel like with Mo Hurst, it was, like, one of those situations where, like, everybody agreed, like, you could be a film guy, an analytics guy, a fan, a media person. Like everyone was sitting there agreeing like, okay, this guy just needs to play more. Like he's productive when he plays. He's good when he plays. His snap count just isn't there to go put up the stats that you were looking for. But I mean, I guess for whatever reason, I mean, I don't know, maybe Gruden just doesn't like him out of personal vendetta or something, but he just wasn't getting the snaps. And then obviously now he's getting cut. So, yeah, I mean, it was kind of like when it happened, I'm kind of like, well, honestly, like at this point, Rodney Hudson was expendable. Anybody's pretty much expendable. And it's like, well, at least I, I kind of had the feeling of like, at least he's going to get a chance to, to go prove himself somewhere else. Hopefully he goes somewhere and gets some snaps for him. But 
Yeah, I mean, it, it, that was a shocker. I mean, it's I pointed it out too. Like, I mean, I don't know many people who are going to say that like a guy like Solomon Thomas is better than Mel Hurst. Yeah. And Solomon Thomas is making $2 million more as a $2 million cap hit more than Mel Hurst was going to be. Yeah. Kendall Vickers, any of these guys. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it just, it's not like, it's not like you're loaded at the position. I understand if like, yeah. yeah, we're just loaded at the position, like the Rams, how the Rams have to let certain guys go. Cause you know, they're paying a bunch of other guys. The Raiders aren't in that position. And, yeah. uh, and even like I, Arden key, I, I think last year I was definitely like accused of being a shill for Arden key. Cause I really thought <laughs> I just, I just like the athleticism and I didn't see anybody with his skill set right. on the Raiders coming off of the edge um, just with the speed that he has. But, would you be shocked if either of those two guys was a very impactful player on either team? <laughs> uh, I wouldn't be shocked if Mo Hurst goes and be, goes and be impactful just because of what we're talking about. You know, I always, I always felt like his problem was just not getting enough snaps, not getting enough yeah. playing time. And then part of that too is kind of on him. Cause uh, I know he's, he was banged up both years or all three, I guess that he played and uh, yeah. he had some injury inj- and concerns. Arden key. I'd be surprised if he ended up being a player, he kind of sh- uh, somewhere else. I think the tools are there, but I mean, when I think back about Arden Key's tenure about the Raiders, the two plays that stand out to me are the Deshaun Watson almost sack that led to a game-winning touchdown, and then the uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick face mask that led to the Dolphins um, that led to the Dolphins game-winning field goal. So it was like the two plays that you do in your job, you're still wrong. <laughs> you're still <laughs> screwing this up. So it's kind of like you know it's kind of inevitable. Um, after they signed Yannick, I'm like, yeah, Arden Key, that's your you're either going to be on the team and ride the bench or you're out of here. And it's kind of, kind of anticipated, but yeah, Mo Hurst. I mean, I think like most people on uh, Raiders Twitter, like came as a big shock and I think he can have some success somewhere else. So, you know, he's going to go back home to new England. You know, he, we know that's what's going to happen. I just, I can see that or like a, a Dallas because Dallas is kind of in a similar spot with as the Raiders at D tackle where like oh, they yeah. have, they have numbers like as far as sheer volume, but they don't have a dude. Mm-hmm. And I mean, they can probably get Mo Hurst for pretty cheap seeing as he's cut, you know, what, two weeks before the draft. Mm-hmm. And I mean, that'd be another guy that they can plug and see if they can figure it out. But oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, let's hope Quentin Jefferson's up to the task. <laughs> um, and not, uh, okay. So speaking of Quentin Jefferson, free agency moves um, feels like, an eternity ago that these moves yeah. were made. Like it's just, it's just nuts how fast it moves by. Give me your take on just a couple that you liked, a couple that you hated. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll say uh, Quentin Jefferson too. I thought that was a little bit more of like a under the radar set lining for them. You know, I think he's a good player or a solid player. And I think he's a good pass rusher at that three tech spot, which, you know, kind of was Mo Hurst's role, which is part of part of, probably part of the reason why they probably got rid of him. Um, you know, obviously there's some work to do against the run. He's far from a great signing, but I like that one as well. Then obviously there's Yannick, you know, it's kind of funny. I was thinking about it before we were on here. I'm like, for the last like two years, myself included, Raider fans have been pounding the table to trade something for Yannick and right, credit to the Raiders, credit to Gruden and Mayock. They stayed patient and ended up getting them for uh, for free or, or at least no draft picks up. So right. I think that one was, uh, those two were, I thought, the biggest acquisitions to me, just kind of like improving that pass rush, improving that defensive line. Um, and then the last one I thought was kind of under the radar was John Brown. You know, he's a guy for me that like, Everywhere he's been, he's just been productive. He's been good. He's a solid number two, not solid number three. And the thing that I liked about that signing too was his situation in Buffalo was a little bit different because, you know, they had the, the uprise of Gabriel Davis at the end of the year and he was banged up and, you know, he ended up just being expendable for the Bills. And those, I think, are the guys you really want to get for in free agency. The guys that they're not leaving because they were bad. They're, they're not like thrown away. They were just kind of like a cap casualty or they just kind of ran out of room on their current team. Mm-hmm. So credit again, credit to the Raiders for getting him. I mean, bringing in John Brown that, to basically replace Nelson Aguilar, who, you know, for the money and everything that it's worth, I would take John Brown over uh, John Brown signing over Albert Aguilar's for whatever it was. I can't remember the figures exactly, but yeah, Albert Brown was significantly less than what Aguilar got. Yeah. And, and, and you talk about what I love that signing too, by the way, like that was uh, to me, it was basically just a fraction of Aguilar, even if he's not as good as Aguilar was last year, the money you saved on that plus John Brown's production where he's going to hit a few home runs for the Raiders. Right. If he's healthy, it's just, it's, it's bound to happen. But um, then they were able to bring in a guy like Willie Sneed too, who I, you know, yeah. just, is he going to make the team? I have no idea, but I think he might be a legit slot backup, which would be nice. Like, yeah. um, and you're still saving money on just, rather than paying that to Nelson Aguilar, but uh, yeah, I, I, it's weird. I, a lot of people seem down about it and I, I don't like basically getting rid of the offensive line all at once. I, right. I can't say I loved that, but I don't think that they lost like anything off their win total. I just, it doesn't, I mean, they might not have gained anything. I'm, I'm not saying that. I think they're still an eight and eight team. I, I don't see the, <laughs> the doom and gloom thing. What, what do you think? 
Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's a fair point. You know, I think with the offensive line, it was kind of like, it was kind of like the, Rodney Hudson was just the straw that broke the camel's back. Like, I feel like, you know, Trent Brown was kind of inevitable. You know, a guy was obviously good when he was on the field, but he was off the field just as much as he was on the field. You know what I mean? And obviously he was making way too much money to be playing half the games that he was uh, under contract for. Gabe Jackson, I think it was kind of not, not the exact same thing, but I mean, at $10 million, he just is not worth that as no. a guard. I honestly thought they kind of got it, could have gotten rid of him before last year. Uh, obviously just a little bit year late. So it's not that big of a deal. But then when you go and look at the Rodney Hudson one, you're like, okay, yeah, Rodney Hudson might be declining. Yeah, Rodney Hudson might be 32, but you're still taking on an $11 million cap hit for him to go play for somebody else. Yeah. And like, yeah, you get a third round pick. You're lucky if that third round pick is Rodney Hudson. Right. Like, you know what I mean? And it's like, and I get like that. Like, so that one for me, where I'm just sitting there like, I'm just scratching my head, like, what's the plan? And then they go off, and you know, my first like one that I hated was Kenyon Drake. Not that I have anything against Kenyon Drake mm-hmm. as a player, but I'm sitting here like, okay, you've gotten rid of three offensive linemen, three starting caliber offensive linemen, and then you send a running back too. <laughs> yeah, like that's the opposite of what you're supposed to be. <laughs> yeah, doing. yeah, yeah, yeah. You build the offensive line, then you get you know some undrafted free agent or some guy in the fifth round to go play running back. Like it's just, and I mean with Drake and. I know like his, uh, you know, people were pointing out to so his contract, you know, how it's split up. It's the $3 million cap hit this year. And then an $8 million next year. Like that doesn't really like justify it for me. That's worse. I yeah, think. I'd rather, I'd rather exactly. eat it this year. Yeah. yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> Cause like, it's like, all right, we have, he's a $3 million cap hit this year. Well, like Dubow tweeted out, I think it was last week uh-huh. right now. They don't have enough cap space to sell in their draft class. Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, say he does suck and you do cut him, and you can save money next year. Well, then you just wasted $3 million when you have holes on your offensive line. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, let's say it's the best case scenario and he does play well and you bring him back next year. Well, now you're having $8 million cap hit yeah. for your running back too. And yeah. you have Josh Jacobs, who's going to be playing in a contract year if they don't pick up his fifth year option. So it was just, for me, like that move was like, yeah. I think Vic Tafer tweeted it out where he's like, when Gruden wants a guy, it doesn't matter. I'm like, well, I know. That's- that's not like great team building. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it sure isn't. Now, the one defense I can make of it is that at least it's a good player. That's the one defense. Yeah, I, I yeah. think he's a good player. Um, sure. And it, and it is something that they don't have in their backfield, like a, just an right. absolute home run hitter. I'm with you, though. I, I It's basically you, when you have like a catalytic converter go out on your car and you're like, let's get some rims. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. I mean? like, that's what we need on this bad boy. It's like, yeah, you don't you don't exactly fix any of the problems. But right. you, yeah, look, and. I think I'm hoping that they use him in the passing game. Cause I don't know how you right. even justify the price tag. If you're just going to hand the ball to him 10 to 12 times a game, you oh, know, yeah. I don't, I don't see, they're going to have to start really designing passes to their running backs, like early downs, which I want them yeah. to do that anyways. So I'm hoping that's where we're going with this. That's yeah. all I can and, say. Yeah. I mean, I de- they definitely will. It's just, it's again, like, I just, I, it just doesn't make sense to me. And I'm trying to make like, you know, if it were a situation where the Raiders had some cap space, they d- had, you know, a solid defense where they just needed a few pieces away, which they don't. And they had their offensive line still intact or relatively still intact. And that'd be all about it, but that's not the case, especially in a down cap year. You know, right. My yeah. Draw, uh, my drawback on it, but who knows, maybe I'll eat be uh, eating crow this time of year. And Kenny Drake will have like a thousand, a thousand thousand season or something like How that. How awesome would it be to eat crow all year on every take? Cause you know what I mean? Like I would just, I, I've always, people are always like are scared to be wrong. I'm like, no, I, I want to be wrong. So bad. <laughs> yeah. You know, I not, like, I I want to see screen caps of my tweets. Like you're an idiot. Like I, I want all that stuff all year. And I'm like, yeah, this sucks. We're 12 and four. Like, yeah. you know, and, and I want to be like that, but um, no, it's, that's, I, I think I'm with you on that. I, I definitely don't like that. They brought back the entire secondary pretty much, uh, except for Eric Harris. Like I, how do you feel about that? As far as the defense going in, um, they, they addressed the D line, like we talked about mm-hmm. earlier, but just the corner, the basically bringing, running it back with the corners last year. Do you think a scheme change makes these corners better? I mean, it's, it's so tough last year for, I think like a defender, like to defend it, Damon Arnett a little bit. Not that I thought that was a great pick. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like the defensive players, like you, you, you were just such at such disadvantage last year without having, um, you know, normal, a normal off season and being able to do that. And especially at corner, I think that, that, you know, hurts things. And then Damon Arnett dealt with injuries and then COVID uh, he had a COVID outbreak. I think he tested positive, right. Or had, he did. Out I think he had it. Yeah. I think you're right. Yeah. Something like that. So I think, so I think with, with him, you know, you can be patient, but then again, at the same time, like if you're going to be a team that's supposed to be competing for a playoff spot, you can't really be patient. You need guys that can play now. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that was definitely one of the things, you know, when I was thinking about this uh, prepping for the show was like, 
the lack of DBs. I mean, they brought in Carl Joseph, brought back Carl Joseph, I should mm-hmm. say. Who, I mean, when I remember when they drafted Jonathan Abram, I'm like, okay, you just drafted another Carl Joseph. So now yeah. they just signed another Jonathan Abram. I'm like, well, you kind of still need a safety. You could like, like you, like you kind of alluded to, you could kind of use another corner. And I was thinking about this the other day. Uh, I was talking with my buddy, Nick Cothrell over at uh, Silver mm-hmm. Black today. Yep, He's like, yep. who's a, who's the Raiders slot corner right now? Yeah. Like, is it, I mean, it's Anik Robertson, who, as May I pointed out, is changing positions and was not good last year. Or is it Nevin Lawson, who's suspended for the first few games of the year? And yeah. as we know, Nevin Lawson isn't that good either. So, oh, uh, BD Williams is actually right behind me, and he's he's really mad that you said that. Oh, me. did I? Is no, he, I'm just gonna know he's, he's not behind me. Did, but, I, did uh, I upset BD? Yeah, no, he, well, B, in BD's credit, he says no, Nevin Lawson plays best out of the slot, which I which is true. I, I mean, against Denver last year, he had a really nice game on Hamler, and yeah. and uh, and I will say that that's that's true. I th- I think Lawson, I, I would have to lean Lawson because I the thing about Amik Robertson is really interesting. Is I, I loved him, he was when they picked him, I'm like, that was probably him and Brian Edwards were the two most excited picks I got last year right. in the, in the draft. But I don't like a meet Robinson isn't a slot corner. Like, I mean, he yeah. is, he, he has to become one. He has the profile I mean. of that, but he, yeah, hasn't played, he, he, hasn't didn't, he was yeah. defending Colin Johnson in, 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 <laughs> in like a six, six player. I'm not saying that that's going to yeah. translate. Although in the preseason, I would like to, Hey, let's just see how, let's just see how it works see outside. It Maybe you have a unicorn yeah. out there. Like you just don't know. Um, but yeah, you're right. There's like positions I know you're not going to fill every hole in the draft, but yeah, it's like, you don't know, you don't know who the starting right tackle is right now. You have, you have a obvious hole and we'll save that for the draft talk here, but you don't know who some of these guys are playing. And, and as far as like Mullen and Arnett, like you're right with Arnett and no rookie corner was good last year, by the way. Like I don't, even Jalen Johnson had a nice start, but he was getting torched at the end. Igben, Igbenogany getting torched all all year and things. So, and I think that position might've suffered the most, like you said, Mm -hmm. from a, from a COVID off season, like that position was obviously one that you need an off season for because nobody came in jamming and it was a pretty solid class too. So I, um, let's just hope that that's the same. And they even look at like a guy from like the Cowboys, like a Trevon Diggs, like he struggled in the beginning of the year, but then at the end of the year, you know, when he started getting more reps, started figuring Mm -hmm. out, I think you can kind of point to that a little bit with Damon Arnett too. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, hopefully he ends up figuring it out. Hopefully uh, we'll be able to uh, be vindicated in that. But yeah, I mean, it, it's tough when two that was considered a reach at the time in the draft and he struggled. So I was a bad, I had like yeah. three listeners at the time, but my draft reaction <laughs> at that time after a few beers, oh boy. Yeah. Let me tell you, I did one instantly after that. I'm, I don't think I'm ever going to do instant draft reactions again. I'd Everyone say have just, to go back and listen to that episode then. No. I, I, it's it's bad. It's rough. <laughs> I, I like it's it's bad. Luckily, there wasn't video because I was looking a mess. Dude. I look like uh, Charlie, and it's always sunny when he's doing the conspiracy board thing. Like, yeah. I, I but uh, so let's move to the draft. Um, no. This I, I asked Austin Gale from PFF uh, on a couple episodes ago. I and I'll ask you the same question because I, I think it's important to see where everyone's mind is. Obviously the biggest need happens to be where the class is very deep, right? At right tackle. Um, You could argue that safety is the Raiders biggest need as well, but I'm not a fan of really any of the safeties going that early at 17. So let's just say, do you, one, do you think the Raiders are pigeonholed at taking a tackle at 17? And two, do you think that they are pigeonholing themselves? Like in their mind, do you think that they're set on taking a tackle at 17? Well, I mean, I'll be honest with you. I've given up trying to get into the mind of (laughs) And whatnot. I've, I've been trying to do that for the last few years and it's a struggle. So I don't, I don't know if I can answer that one, but honestly, I feel like they kind of are like, I'm a big BPA uh, first round kind of guy. But then when I look at the rest of this roster, like, I don't think like we're talking about, it's that far off, but their holes and their knees are huge. Like, mm. uh, and I think at right tackle, like, I mean, if, if they want to roll out Brandon Parker, they then, yeah, it's a great thing that we have Brett Marcus Mariota as the best backup quarterback in the NFL because that guy is still a turnstile. And like, your guy Peterman might get some burn. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, 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 yeah. maybe we'll need to get that up. So this, can, is all, this is all a long game for you. I, I see what you're exactly. doing here. Yeah, This is all a long game for you to get your narrative off. I see. I exactly, yeah, for sure. So, I mean, so, yeah, I, I think they kind of are, you know, like you said, the good news is there's a log jam of a lot of really good tackles where I don't think they can really go wrong, but – I've said that in the past for the past 20 years. So, yeah, I mean, I think they kind of almost have to, Um, if they do want to go safety, like you kind of mentioned, I wouldn't mind that, but I I feel like the first two picks right now that make the most logical sense have to be tackle and safety in whatever order that ends up being. Mm. um, So be it kind of deal. Yeah. I'm, I'm crazy. I'm kind of just like, I don't even care if you 
fill those two needs. I'm just like, I need seven Go good players. I need seven good players on this team. And you then I'll bring in, I'll bring in Alejandro Villanueva to start at right tackle. Like that's what I personally is what I would do. Um, because yeah. I, it's like, I, the other thing is, and I think these guys are good. I think this, what I do love is that the Raiders, if, if you could spin it positively, at least it's not a year where there's only just Panay Sewell and Rashawn right. Slater. And it's like, and now we have to either go make a move or force this guy. That's a third round pick. There's at least like, I would say six to seven tackles that if they took at 17, I'd be like, mm -hmm. fine, that's fine. Yeah. I don't care. Like, like it's almost like I, I, I go back and forth. Like I almost hope that they are pigeonholing it because it's like, I feel like that's the least mistake worthy right. position where like, even if it's like Sam Cosby, I'm just like, okay, I wouldn't have taken him there, but whatever. I think he's an okay player, Yeah. you know? So um, let me ask you this. Who are you thinking at 17? If you're kind of thinking, uh, just getting, getting the best player. Who's somebody's going to drop. I just think, I just think it, it, it happens every time the Raiders pick in the first round. We're like, how is that guy still there? Derwin yeah. James, the uh, um, last year with all those receivers on the CD board, Lamb. CD lamb. Um, uh, even at 19, like there were other players. I, I can't even remember, um, you know, yeah. Just there's there's guys that you don't expect to be there. So I can't say that, but I, I, I could see one of the top three corners somehow slipping there. I'm not saying I'm not saying it will. I just there's right. weird, there's always going to be a team in the top 17 that takes one guy. You're like, whoa, what ha what happened? Like, you know, just somebody somebody's it's usually the Raiders, but you know, it might it might be <laughs> yeah, somebody like, reaches. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Cleveland Furl. Whoa. Yeah. yeah. And uh, but like I don't know. I'm I'm still on the I'm still trying to trying to have the, the Parsons at 17 hype train going Parsons at 17. I just, I just yeah. think, I think that, I think he has some off field issues. Um, I saw Ted win. Actually, I, I don't know if you saw Ted's tweet on that the other day where he was like, do you think the Raiders have an infrastructure to bring in somebody like Parsons? And I'm yeah. like, they've brought in like legit mentally ill people. Like, to, <laughs> I, I like, I'm just saying like, it's, yeah, I, I, I don't care. Like just, it's yeah. Yeah. I, I, I say, if you're going to burn it, go Joker mode and just, you know, yeah, like, I don't yeah. know. I, I think there's, I, I'm sorry. I didn't even answer your question. So no, you're good. Mike, Micah Parsons, like, or somebody like that. I, I, we don't know how the corners are actually valued around the league. You know, mm -hmm. we don't know if like maybe JC Horn CB three did a lot of teams or I, maybe I'm being idealistic here, but I just, I would hate to just be like, okay, like they were going to pick Tevin Jenkins this whole time. And even though I love Tevin Jenkins, yeah. there could have been like three or four blue chip guys, right. like right there where they're like, no, we were taking Jenkins the whole time. That's just what I'm a little bit scared of. But again, there's that safety net where at least these tackles are good. That's yeah. It. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think you have a good point. I think Parsons definitely could slide. I think those off the field issues are, are and he's a linebacker. Big. Yeah. He's a linebacker. Yeah. Like, at the end of the day, he's a linebacker where his position might be a different on a different exactly. team. He might be an edge to somebody, which I actually mm -hmm. think he kind of is more of like a, like a hybrid kind of yeah. rusher guy. I don't really like the way he, I don't think his coverage is, is anything amazing. Like I think he yeah, could no, be. I, yeah, yeah, I agree with you. A lot of and like I remember when I was watching him, a lot of his coverages in Penn State were kind of just dropping in the and the mid, the underneath areas and kind of just sitting and parking himself there. But when he did uh, rush the passer, because he is a natural edge, that's what he played in high school, and uh, you know that's probably probably or easily the best in this class. Um, the other guy, like if you're thinking about a corner dropping, I think the corner that could drop is Caleb Farley, and I would be absolutely about that. I like Caleb Farley. You like the medical? I that's that's the problem. Is like okay. I heard it's bad. I heard it's I heard, yeah, I heard it's and that, bad. Yeah, I mean, I don't have access to the medical information, so I don't like, you know, I'm not going to make a, mm -hmm. a statement on something I don't know about. But, um, you know, from what I can say, from what I've seen on his tape, like, I mean, he's, if it weren't for his back issues, which, I mean, obviously back issues scare the shit out of me because, too, because those always come back to haunt you. Like, yeah. you know, like, they're just hard to deal with. But his tape just alone, I'm like, he's the best corner in this class. He's moved so fluidly, but if he can't be on the field, it doesn't matter. Really. Yeah. And, and I'm the same way with him and Jalen Phillips where I'm like, if they took him, I'd go, wow, interesting. And I like it. You know, I like it. Like that means you evaluated yeah. correctly what you saw on tape, mm -hmm. in my opinion. And I, and you know, I, like I think Phillips and Farley, I think they're edge one and CB one if we're not talking about health. Yeah. And I mean, I, I mean, with Phillips, it's almost a matter of like, a moral issue like should this guy still be playing football like dude yeah. you had like six concussions man like come on yeah. dude like it's, I, it's... I know you love it i respect it but like you, you can't go anywhere without your brain like yeah well hey if you fill out four years in the league you know and 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 we don't pick up the fifth year but you give me four years of I, i'm with you i i don't know if i would yeah i i would instantly go doomer mode because it's the raiders i'm like he's gonna get a concussion in preseason <laughs> and retire like like that's that's what i would that's where i would go like if it's one of those ones where if like the ravens take him the pats take him everyone's like oh he's just he's a great monster pick. yeah great, great pick yeah. and it ends up working out it's just this weird hex that's that's yeah. over the raiders but um what yeah i, I guess 
let's move to the, the other parts in the draft. Who are some of your guys? Cause you're a Raider fan, right? Correct. Like yeah, you're, you're yeah. a fan first. So when you're evaluating, you're not necessarily evaluating for the Raiders, right? You're just evaluating as a draft evaluator yeah. in the back of your mind though. There's gotta be that, like this guy needs to be wearing my team's uniform. You, know? <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. I, you, you got that a little bit. So who are some guys, maybe they're not round one guys, but give me just some of your guys, like, and they don't have to fit needs, but just guys you want to see wearing silver and black. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, part of my videos too, I've, I'll, I'll admit in the, and especially in the latter ones, I've been, you know, specifically looking at right tackles and safeties just because that's obviously, <laughs> yeah, <the Raiders>. yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I think the biggest guy for me, the guy that I'd love the scenario that I'd love to see for the Raiders go going back to what I was talking about before of going OT safety in round one and two mm-hmm. would be a Tevin Jenkins in round one. He's a guy like, I know you mentioned him too. I love that guy a lot. Yeah. And then the other guy would be uh, Richie Grant. Like I watched him on, or I did his video the other, uh, a while back and just fell in love with the guy you know i watched him play uh play the single high spot play in the box cover mm-hmm. the slot you know do it all at the senior bowl he was probably the one of the most impressive guys out yeah. there improved his stock a lot he was out there covering covering slot receivers where a lot of other safeties like guys like hansa nasa ladin from florida state were struggling he was out there thriving getting picks from one-on-ones which is extremely rare like other corners weren't doing that and i think he can be that kind of like that center fielder in that back half uh, yeah. of the back half of the, uh, the defense for Gus Bradley. And the other guy that, uh, you know, I think they could end up going, I haven't watched too much, but I'm not, he's uh, on my list. I'm actually going to watch him later today. It would be Andre Cisco, mm. um, kind of a ball hog out of, uh, out of, um, uh, out Syracuse, of uh, Syracuse. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. And uh, I mean, I mean, he came in as a freshman and had seven picks <laughs> like, yeah. and had, and then followed it up the next year with five. So like the guy's just an absolute playmaker. Um, and then on the offensive tackle side, if they're going to go uh, round two, I don't know if he'll be there. He'd probably go a little bit easier. I'm going to say Samuel Cassini. Uh, I Cassini. like him. Yeah, I like him a lot. I think he's got a lot of room to grow as a run blocker. But if we go back and look at like kind of the, the draft history of offensive linemen, he's kind of in a way similar to Colton Miller, where like good pass blocker, pretty good athlete, needs some work to need some room for growth for uh, – as far as run blocking goes, and he can put on some size. He can probably put on about 20 pounds, and he's got the lean frame to do it. It's just if you ask him to run block right now in his first year, he's probably going to get a little dominated, which is typically what you're looking for on the right side uh, of your offensive line. But who knows? I mean, again, it's a passing league nowadays. We keep hearing that. Yeah. Raiders are going to air it out. You know, Kasimi's the guy. I think he can be a, a really good dude for him. Um, other than that, you know, a couple other tackles that I like would be Liam Eikenberg from Notre Dame, mm-hmm. kind of the opposite of Kosimi, you know, really good run blocker. He's, not good. The feet. He's a good player though. I mean, that to me, that makes the most sense kind of for the, what the Raiders would do, seeing as it's a, a high profile school like Notre Dame and an offensive lineman uh, that um, are, and Notre Dame is obviously, you know, well known for producing offensive lines. So that kind of falls in line with what the Raiders are doing with like the Clemson, Ohio State oh, yeah. the guys. Um, the last one is actually going to be Dylan Randons. I like right him. Tackle. North Dakota. Yeah. yeah North, Dakota North Dakota state. State. Another, another guy. He's a guy that absolutely killed at the senior bowl. Every time I watched him, he was putting somebody on the floor. Great pass pro again. I mean, and uh, he actually took some reps at guard over in mobile too. So he's got a little bit of versatility to him. So those are yeah. kind of my, my five that I'm kind of eyeing on, on at that pick with 48. That's good. That's good. Um, I, good thing. The funny thing about Richie Grant too, is I, I think, the Raiders like seem like they like drafting old players, like older guys. So mm-hmm. I think I, I do. Th- I honestly think like Richie Grant's possible at 17. And that would yeah. scare me a little bit, even though I like him. I'm just like, oh, what did you pass on to take him? Yeah. At That's all it is. It's not. I, I think I think he's the best true free safety um, in the draft only because uh, Cisco's coming. I, I don't even know if Cisco's gonna be ready for camp. I actually I'm not sure if he's if he's. I- I would think he should be. He yeah, just okay. tore his ACL. I mean, I say just tore his ACL, but he yeah. did it and he did it early. So I think he like that it's usually like a six to eight month window nowadays with uh, modern science and rehab to come back from that. So I think he should. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously you got to do the medical research on a guy like that. And, you know, same thing with Caleb Farley, like yeah. we were just talking about, you got to get your doctors in there, which is hard with the, the COVID uh, off season or the yeah. that we're still living in. So that's kind of probably a bit of a risk at that point at, at, uh, at 48. Mm-hmm. So, so I had a, there was an interesting, uh, kind of thing i saw one of our uh, our colleagues I will, i'll say this marcus johnson posted it um he was saying that he was digging up on guys under tom cable arm length he was doing like i don't know if you saw gotcha. this where yeah where he was talking about certain arm lengths i think under 34 and like he likes tom cable likes albatross wingspans on his on his <laughs> yeah. on his lineman and this year there's not even some of the top guys they don't have the longest arms yeah. so 
do you think it's that simple with Tom Cable to where, cause he obviously has pull within the organization. He obviously yeah. does. Um, I mean, I'd, I'd say as much pull as like a Gus Bradley would this year, hopefully, you know? Um, yeah. So what do, what do you think about like arm length? Do you think that's going to factor in big time? Like if the, uh, to a guy they take at 17? I mean, I think it definitely could. I mean, you know, it's one of those things where like, Oh, arm length, we make a big deal about arm length. And then there's a few outliers that, you know, break the code. I think, Honestly, in my opinion, I mean, Marcus has probably done way more research on this than me, and I'm just kind of going off the cuff here. I think with Cable, he looks more for athletes mm-hmm. rather than necessarily arm length. And then if the arm length comes with it, that's also a plus for him. And, you know, if two guys are tied athletically, then he's going to go with the one with the longer arms. But, like, with Tom Cable, the one guy that I always run back to is George Fant, who mm-hmm. in, uh, coming out of college was a power forward, and they were putting him at left tackle. I mean, what does that say? That's probably a guy with some pretty damn good feet. Yeah. And that's, I think, where I think a guy like Kosimi, you know, kind of fits in. Whereas, you know, a guy like Tevin Jenkins, how much, as much as I like him, I think he's a better athlete than people give him credit for. Yeah. But as far as him versus Kosimi or Kosimi, you know, I mean, Kosimi is much better, has much better feet than he does, you know, as far as we're looking at those, you know, the te- OT two through eight or whatever it is, you know, that where's that log jam, jam of guys. Yeah. Yeah. No. I, and like, cause I, I was struggling cause I was looking at guys like to, uh, like the, some guys I like, maybe f- if they don't take them at 17, like you were saying at like 48, there was a guy like Jackson Carmen um, right. from, uh, from Clemson at Clemson. So you always have to maybe study <laughs> yeah. them a little extra hard. Cause exactly. they might be on your team. And uh, he, you know, I, I, I liked, I like what he does and he's a super athlete, like super strong, but his arms are like 32 and a half inches. Yeah. And I'm thinking in my head, is that, is that a deal breaker? And I, and, and you're saying basically that, you know, just from what you've seen, do you think that maybe his athleticism might be able to overpower that and, Maybe he's a guard. Maybe he ends up becoming a guard. Yeah. It's not the worst thing in the world if you draft this right tackle and he ends up becoming your guard because I don't even I don't even know if their guard situation is is no it's sustainable. not I mean, sustainable I should say yeah it's not I mean like I'm honestly like their best guard on their roster right now and um you know I'm probably missing someone that someone's gonna call me out on later is Denzel Good like, incognito Richie, maybe yeah nah. but here's the thing with Richie Incognito like we talk about Rodney Hudson being old at like 32 Richie Incognito is closer to 40 than he is 30. Right. Richie Incognito is also like, we're talking about Caleb Farley with his back injury. Okay. We're talking, we also have a 37 year old left guard that has an Achilles injury. Yeah. Look what it did to Kobe. Like, you know what yeah, I mean? Like, yeah, like yeah. at the end of his and career, Kobe, like, that's Kobe. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and he's not blocking yeah, people and stuff. Yeah. No, yeah. I'm, I'm with you. Yeah. yeah so, I mean, and on that point too, like when you're 300 pounds and you have a lower body injury, that's a lot of mass. That's a lot of force going down on that thing yeah. that's surgically repaired or whatever he had done to it. So like I, I was just, I was weary when they signed Incognito. Obviously, he had the great year that that first year, and then I felt uh, it was a, not. I hate to say I felt vindicated, but part of my take was kind of true because I'm like, you can, you can't really rely on this guy for the future. Mm-hmm. So I mean, I think you're right. Like they can get a guard. You know, if they want to get a guy like Jackson Carmen in round two, I'd kind of be upset about that. I think he's more of a fourth round guy wherever you look at him, mm-hmm. like third or fourth. But you know, obviously, they're in the guard market too. You know, that's not yeah. that's not not a need either. So. Yeah, exactly. And, and, you know, and, and also, you know, another thing I, I, I'm a big proponent of, and I, I just, before we wrap up, I'd love to get your take on this. Uh, w- you don't draft for just this year. That's one thing. Like, yeah. like imagine, remember when the Raiders signed, um, I mean, there's a couple, there's many such cases of this, the, the Raiders signing Tyrell Williams, uh, you know, even like JJ Nelson and guys like that, bringing them in and, and they had Antonio Brown and you're thinking, dude, we're loaded at wide receiver. <laughs> then like halfway through the year, they didn't even have wide receivers. And, yeah. and you just don't know what your needs tomorrow will be. And if you're drafting somebody, especially in the first round, you're banking on five and a second contract years uh, yeah, of true. this player. So like, it's, it brings me back to Micah Parsons or guys like that. Like, yeah. Oh, they just signed two linebackers. It's like, yeah, maybe you can get off one of their contracts. You know, yeah, if, yeah. If, if Parsons is your linebacker or you have your edge, maybe you don't, you know, have to pay one of your edge players and maybe you don't have to, you can let Yannick walk in two years and get a comp pick or something. Like it's, it's, it's definitely a, a long game for it. So like, I don't know, there's certain teams like Jason light was saying that they actually do three year evaluations. Their bo- power, their BPA board is based on three year plans, not just who's yeah. the best right now. So is that something you, you think about with the draft or no? Yeah. I mean, I, like I said, uh, you know, I'm typically a BPA kind of guy, especially in the first round and even leaking into the second. And I mean, I think, one of the things that I've always kind of thought of, like, if you draft for need, say, in the first round, which I know is somewhat contradictory to what I was saying earlier about the tackles, but again, I think that the tackle class is uh, so good that it could be a both, uh, you know, a double case scenario where 
you know, the best player on the board does fill a need. Uh, but I mean, I think when we're talking about BPA versus need, especially early, if you draft for need, that means you need that player and you need that player to play. Whereas if you draft a best player available and they bust, you can just put, put them on the bench. But if you drafted the guy for need, yeah. you still have to put him out there because you don't have anybody else. Like at Point. least if you have a first round pick, that's like not at a position of need, at least you can put him on the bench and he's not a liability on the field. Like if you have to literally, you literally have to play this guy yeah. because you don't have anybody else. Well, then you're screwed. And I mean, you know, the other end of that is if you're putting out a backup there anyway, but at least you have the upside of like, okay, I just got a stud and I'm going to figure out the rest of my roster later. Like I get Micah Parsons. Okay. Maybe I look at trading, you know, uh, Nick Kwiatkowski and trying to get back into the mid rounds and pick up somebody else at another need. And who knows, you know, it is a lottery that like, as much as, you know, I try and predict it and try and figure out who's going to be great and who's not, I'm going to miss Mike Mayock's going to miss, you know, Bill Belichick's going to miss Bill Belichick's been doing a lot of misses. After, a lot. <laughs> yeah. A lot of misses after he was lauded for how great of a, a drafter he was, you know, there is, there is a crapshoot element and there's so much that you just want to play the lottery almost with more, as many tickets as possible. Yeah. You know I mean? So I think, you know, to your point, like, yeah, if Michael Parsons slips again, take him, take the risk. You can either, again, you, if he's not good, if he's immature, you can bench him and you don't have to, you're not hurting your team too much, or you can just figure it out and trade one of your other linebackers that's on your roster. That's decent and get back in and maybe get another chance of getting a fifth round gem or something like that. Yeah. And, and I, and I, I agree with you too. Cause if you even, I'm just thinking about the draft last year at pick 12, um, Henry Ruggs. Now Henry Ruggs might've been BPA on Mike Mayock's board yeah, or Gruden. he probably was honestly, but what if you go Tristan Wirfs? Then at the time, the fan base, Raiders Twitter is like, dude, we have Trent Brown and Colton Miller. What are you doing? It's right. like, now, now we don't have Trent Brown anymore. And, and <laughs> yeah. now we're not, now we're not this year. We're not scrambling to draft a right tackle. You yeah. know, it's, it's, I'm not, and Tristan Wirfs is a monster. Like, I'm sorry. He would have, he would have contributed way more to the team than Henry Ruggs did last year for whatever reason. Um, and, and yeah, that's, 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 I always want Raider fans to not just be like, this guy plays the, right. and week one starter. And that's all that matters. And to your point, Three snaps into last season, Tristan Wirfs would have been playing. Exactly. And nobody right. would have cared. Everyone would have been yeah. like, everyone would be like, I don't care about Trent Brown. I wouldn't have had yeah. to do so much PR for Trent Brown. Last year. <laughs> That's the problem. I was the Trent Brown shill last year. Right. And I would, I would have just been like, whatever, just get off his contract at the end of the year. No one cares. Like it's not even that big of a deal. Right. And, and, and like with a team with this many holes, or at least uh, they just need depth. I should say I, they have holes, but they also just need good players everywhere. I mean, you can make a case for pretty much anywhere. Yeah. You know, even, even quarterback, if somehow Justin Fields is there, I mean, you have, you could say that you have a need a quarterback at that point, but you just have with the Raiders. You're just like, man, the, my motto here is just like, just pick good players and just, yeah. and just figure it out. Like if they don't fill the need at right tackle, it's going to suck. Maybe it sucks this year, but maybe you figure it out. Next, we've been losing for a long time. So at <laughs> least, at least if you, if I see that it's on the right trajectory, but yeah, who knows? Yeah. Man. I mean, Steve Palazzolo had a soccer team uh, from PFF side of soccer team quote, which was draft good players and creep back to average. I love his take on that is get yeah. to average. Like you don't yeah. have to be, if you're average, like the Raiders aren't even average at a lot of position groups, you know, yeah. like they're, they're like sure. really subpar. If they get their secondary to average this year, if they get their pass rush to average this year, they're going to win two to three more games. Like yeah. regardless of the card debates people have on Twitter, if you just do that, you're going to win more games. So sure, yeah, absolutely. Well, Matt, I appreciate you coming through. Um, I, de I definitely want to have you on again sometime. Maybe, uh, maybe during the slow time during the summer, you know what I mean? When, good, when we're, when we're craving for content, we'll do something like that, <laughs> but um, go ahead and drop your Twitter handle everywhere. People can find you. So, uh, and then uh, yeah, wrap up. Appreciate it, man. Yeah. Thanks again for having me on. I had a blast. Uh, yeah. You can follow me on Twitter at and holder 95. Uh, or, uh, yeah, that's right. At and holder 95. My uh, yeah, back. Can't even remember my own Twitter handle, whatever, but yeah, I've been drop as you mentioned, dropping those, uh, 220 scouting videos should have one every weekday up until uh round one and uh buy a draft guide if you uh want to get prepared 12 yes. bucks 350 profiles if you guys haven't checked it out um yep that's about yeah. it Thanks, um, especially it. you guys raider nation pick up a draft yes. guys all right all right guys have a good one i'm glenn rockney you guys know where to find me this is rock vegas podcast uh thanks matt holder for joining me and uh yeah follow me on twitter i'm, I'm kind of fun sometimes but all right, <laughs> all right guys